I'm at the airport, but I'm not going on a trip today. I'm here to pick it. So three major flight attendant unions are getting together to pick it. It's my carrier, United and American. I'm not sure if there's any other carriers, but today is Tuesday, February 13th, and we're picketing across the nation. We are all out of contract. My contract has been under negotiation for five years. I will be going to work tomorrow, but I'm going to take you along for a little bit of the picket and show you what I can. We're permitted for 300 flight attendants. Not sure how many are here yet. Contracts now! Contracts now! Contracts now! Contract now! Contract now! Contract now! Contract now! All right, I'm on the plane. I didn't realize we were on an 800. I wore the scarf today, but I don't know if it's gonna last. We used to, our scarf used to be square, not that you really care, and I used to love it. But this is weird, whatever. So, to, to Memphis today, and we're not completely full. It's Valentine's Day, the red is very appropriate. Yesterday's picketing went well, I was really tired and not completely full. We're headed to Houston and then to Memphis. Let's go. My A got us all Valentine's. Isn't that so nice? I did not. <laughs> Let's open it. Ooh. Little card. Oh, and little screen cleansing towelettes. How sweet. That is so nice. The Love Airline. And today is my 10 year in flight anniversary. I graduated and got my wings. 10 years ago today. So let's make it a great trip. But I, my A came on when I was talking to you and I went up and how sweet. So let's make it a good trip. Memphis and I made coffee this morning and I made waffles. I have not made waffles in a hot minute. I was like, I'm gonna need those today. We have a long day. I have to be downstairs in one hour. So I made those and they're lovely, but I wanted to come on here and say good morning because it was so dark in this room last night that I could not vlog. I have one of those little light rings I need to bring so I can say, hey, when I get to the hotel, but yesterday was pretty good. I do have two drama stories to tell you. I wasn't personally involved in either of them, but I'll tell you the first one because it's a short one. I'll save the second story for when we get to Florida later tonight or tomorrow. My carrier, we do not assign seats. You do not have a ticket that says like A6. It's open seating. You can sit in any empty seat on the aircraft. Now, there is a restriction to that rule if you pre-board. If you have to do a medical pre-board because you have to get on, because you need a specific seat on the aircraft, like maybe you need to be close to the restroom, maybe you have claustrophobia and you need to sit in a certain part of the cabin to help you, those types of things. Then you can get on first, but you cannot sit in the emergency exit row. So we're on the 800, I'm the B in the back. The D goes up front and helps A with the pre-boarding and then they move throughout the cabin just helping people board. So she's paying attention to who's pre-boarding. People are pre-boarding and then a couple moves past her. Cause again, if you pre-board, you could sit in the front row or you could sit in the very back row. There's no restrictions on that. You just cannot sit in the emergency exit row. She's helping other people board and her boyfriend is the C. So 
He's the one when you're C position, you sit, you stand in the emergency exit row and you make sure that everyone who sits in the emergency exit row is willing and able to open the door. And you also make sure that pre-boarders don't sit there, kids under the age of 15. You make sure the car seats are not placed directly behind the emergency exit row, blah, blah, blah. Those are the things. She comes back and she notices that one of the couples that pre-boards was sitting in the emergency exit row. So she just asked them, she's like, hey, did you pre-board? And the husband is honest and says yes and the wife says no and so she challenges them about that and makes them move because they did in fact pre-board she remembered who the first general board person was and in fact she asked him what it says in their ticket because it actually says something like I don't know if it says truly pre or it says like PRD it has a code and she's like yeah that's because you pre-boarded so we had to move her out of the emergency exit row I have to save the other story because it's kind of involved and I need to finish eating my waffles and finish getting ready. We make an aircraft swap today in Orlando. We go Memphis someplace, someplace Orlando, Orlando to Fort Myers, Florida. So I'll give you a quick room tour and then we'll be on our way. All right, starting at the door. Super standard bathroom with all my stuff out. I used that last night on my hair. I got my suitcase and then it's a king bed. Got my heating pad, <laughs> my charging station where I made my waffles and my coffee. And let's look out the window. The hotel's not bad, the location is not awesome. So, there we go. I remembered something while I was putting my makeup on. I love these little eyeshadow sticks because you don't have to be like a makeup artist and I just like them. But our pilots, we're still negotiating our contract which is why I started this vlog with our picket. Today's February 15th. Our negotiating team, the company, and the mediator, federal mediator, are supposed to meet on the 21st and 22nd of February. One of the things that the pilots got in their contract is that if an overnight is like 15 hours or longer, it has to be at a downtown or ocean location. If it's under, I think, 14 and a half hours, I'm not exactly sure on the exact hours, that it has to be an airport hotel. So I'm thinking that that means that this hotel, because if right now they still keep us together, hopefully this hotel will be short-lived. I don't know if it was a security issue with downtown Memphis. Again, it could be a security issue with most downtowns. You just have to be wise. But this hotel location is the pit. Because even to walk to any restaurants or shopping, I mean, we're surrounded by highways on both sides. And I think there's a path but it's not that easy. So I'm hoping that once all of the things for their contract get negotiated out, that maybe we'll move. It's just not a great location. I don't know what's around here. Maybe there's convention space. If they could just pick the hotel up and move it to someplace more interesting, that would be nice. So I'm hoping that that becomes a reality soon. They work out all the hotels. I've never picketed before, and so that was the first time. It's an interesting thing. Have you ever picketed? It's just weird. I mean, we're, we're being loud. The pilots picket in silence, which I like because you get tired of yelling or raising your voice. <laughs> but it's also so weird and so contrary to our role in hospitality. I don't know. It was weird. It's kind of historic having all of the different airlines pick it together. So I think across the country, it was like 100,000 flight attendants from five different carriers because that's two thirds of the flight attendants right now are out of contract. It's hard because I understand that our economic times are not what they were just a couple of years ago. It's like they wanna blame COVID or the economic times right now, but we were the ones that made it and flew through COVID. I didn't throw, fly through all of it, but many flight attendants did and kept the airline up and running. That was important because the mail, the mail goes in the belly of the aircraft more than just people go in aircrafts. And so vaccines went in aircrafts and all that jazz. But one of the my favorite signs that they had is that the back line, the v vice presidents make their profit off the front lines, which is us, customer service. It's everyone on the ground. I've always been more pro company. I love my company, but you know, we've kind of lost that love and feeling lately. And this is an important contract for me because it's the one that I will retire under. 
So for me, that's why this one is so important. My eyebrows look so dark when I color them in that all I can look at is my eyebrows, and now that's all you're gonna look at. I'm really, really proud of my work group for waiting until the pilot's contract passed because I admire and deeply look at what the pilots do is, is, a, is a skill level higher than ours. I completely agree. But as much as the plane can't fly without the pilots, it can't fly without us per FAA regulations. So is my job as critical as a pilot? Not in all aspects. I'm not trying to put myself on the same level as a pilot. I don't expect to make the same as a pilot, but I do want the respect. The plane can't fly. We have to evacuate the plane in 90 seconds. We are the like the lifeguards. We may look pretty, but when someone drowns, you want someone to jump in. When someone has is in distress, you that's when you call on us. Are we typically handing you a soda? Yes, but okay, I'm gonna stop ranting and finish getting ready and get out the door. But the picketing was, it was a very interesting and new phenomenon for me. I was proud to be there and we'll see what it brings with our contract negotiations. Last leg, we're in St. Louis, going to Fort Myers and we've got the giant bins. These are the fancy ones where the bags go sideways. I like them and I hate them at the same time, but one more. Made it to Florida. I'm in my room. Oh, I took my watch off. I don't know what time it is. We got a box lunch when we came in, or a box dinner, because I think the restaurant was about to close. Let's rip into it. Let's see what's in here. Well, got a bag of chips, applesauce, a turkey sandwich, and a granola bar. And then there's a mayonnaise pack and a silverware pack in here. I don't know, I might eat pieces and parts of that. And I brought my own cocktail. I brought this with me, not from the plane, from my house. I did bring get a grab a Coke Zero from the plane and I made myself a little cocktail. And then I have ribs heating up in the hot logic over there. I'm just gonna hang out for a little bit. We don't have to lobby until tomorrow at 4.55 p.m. I did promise you the drama story. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow when I have better lighting because it's dark in here. I'm going to eat and hang out and decompress. It was a pretty good day. Three very full flights, but overall it was a good day. And yeah, I will tell you about the drama we had on day one. I think tomorrow I'm just gonna hang out by the pool. I'm gonna look up, there are some shops around here. I might venture out and I'm just gonna try to take it easy. Sit by the pool, enjoy. It's gonna be a little bit cooler tomorrow. I guess it was 85 here today, but I think it's supposed to be cloudy tomorrow. But we're still gonna have a good day. And I will see you guys in the morning. All right, let's look up the window. Good morning, everybody. We're in Florida and I'll whip you around. We'll do a room tour. The bed I slept in, all the stuff in the suitcase. So you guys, I always take the decaf coffee and the bathroom. Simple, simple. All right, so here's the story. Got my coffee. We are on an almost completely full flight. We're going to Houston and this person sat down in the emergency exit row and proceeded to spread their food buffet on their tray table, the tray table next to them. Someone comes up and asks if they can sit in the seat, the middle seat, and he says, no, uh, you need to go find another seat. You can't tell people they've gotta go find another seat, especially on almost completely full flight. The flight attendant, I don't remember how she saw this interaction or if the passenger came back, and so the flight attendant went up to the passenger and was like, you know, you need to move your stuff because someone needs to sit here, and he's like, no, they can't sit here. Again, I'm not exactly sure of the complete interaction right there. All I know is that she did not feel that he was one who was going to comply with instructions. And when you're sitting in the emergency exit row, that is vital. So she chose to move him and he ended up on an aisle seat. Now again, you don't have to like it. He doesn't have to like it, but there's a procedure. All he had to do was get off the plane. He could ask her her name because if you have an issue with me, if you want to write a good thing or a bad thing, all you need is the flight attendant's first name and the flight segment. We're flying from Denver to Houston on flight 1234. And you send that into the company, whatever airline you're flying, they're gonna find that flight attendant. There was an interaction between them. 
the girl, even though he cleaned up all his stuff, wasn't comfortable sitting there. So she ended up sitting someplace else. I think we only had like three to five seats empty on this flight. The guy lucked out and got an aisle seat. So I'm out doing my service and he was taking pictures of the flight attendant that he had the interaction altercation with. And one of my customers in my section was like, hey, that guy is taking pictures of the flight attendant. And I was like, okay. So I spoke with the other flight attendant and she's like, you know, that's fine, I don't care. You know, it's a pretty long flight, two and a half hours, I think. We're doing our thing. He didn't ever get upset or mad. He was in my section. I don't think he got anything because again, he had like a drink with his big meal. I gave him snacks, I offered him drinks. I did everything. I didn't treat him any differently. So when he gets her name, at some point in the flight, when he gets off the plane, he complains first to the operations agent, which is the first person you see when you're getting off the plane. Next, I decide to go up and get food and I see him a couple gates down asking a customer service agent for a flight attendant supervisor. So I'm like, oh my gosh, he just needs to write in, but he wants to complain right then. So I get my food, I'm coming back and he is letting these two supervisors have it. And I stand off to the side, trying to like get one of the, the, the one guy's attention. But afterwards he told me, I, I saw you, but I was trying so hard to pay attention to this guy, like show that he was paying attention, engaged. So I was like, it's fine. So I went back to the plane and of course they looked it up and they figured out that we were there for two hours. So they came down for her side of the story. And at this point, we knew that she had three witness statements. She went back to that area and people were like, oh my gosh, that guy was awful. He was such a dick. And they gave her their business cards, their names, their phone numbers, their addresses, all the things. So she had like three witness statements backing up what a jerk he was. And so she really wasn't worried. And then after she talked to the supervisors, I mean, everyone was laughing. They were just laughing about the whole situation because I used to handle customer complaints and people will write in a very impassioned story. And again, there's your side, their side, and the truth with every situation. And people would complain about how they were treated by us, but they always seem to fail to leave out things like, oh, I was arrested and I left in handcuffs. The bottom line is there were witnesses that saw his nasty behavior. Oh. I forgot. The other flight attendant went up top and this customer saw her and said, hey you, you tell, insert name, flight attendant, it's on. Like, what the heck? So all I know is she had corroborating stories, witnesses who had nothing to do with the incident back her up on his nasty mean behavior. I don't know what he's trying to get. Hopefully, unfortunately, sometimes the company hands out gift certificates or gestures of goodwill, even though if someone was not deserving of them. But she's not gonna get in trouble because she had people backing up her story. But I don't know, that's the drama. That's the drama. Knock on wood, there's no drama today. We are doing two home. We do have to go through St. Louis today and it's gonna be snowy, but only like one to three inches, I think. So I don't think that's gonna mess us up, but I'm gonna finish my coffee, put a little makeup on and let's go for a walk. Okay, I'm out. Hotel is behind me and we're just walking across. There's this giant parking lot that's completely empty and this car is creeping on my, <laughs> right shoulder. Yes, I'm talking to my phone. But hello, the entire parking lot is empty. Like, what the heck? I'm headed over here. It is so nice out. It's like 75. You know the people in Florida are probably wearing pants. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts. And my Albuquerque t-shirt. Let's go see if I can spend some money. It's a cute little outdoor mall and their map didn't have a you are here sticker so I went the wrong direction. <laughs> One of my good friends is headed on a cruise on the 27th and let me tell you, color me jealous. Okay, so parents out there, moms would understand the ability to walk around in Ulta without a preteen and two teens and all the kids in tow. They know what an amazing luxury that is. So that's what I'm doing. I think I am gonna get this e.l.f. spray on sunscreen because your girl burns. All right, so when I came down to the pool, I realized I have been here before, but I'm pretty sure it was before the YouTube channel. 
Oh, and look at my toes. You can see how long it's been since I had a pedicure. <laughs> I came down here to try and like read and study and there's lots of people and I can't read. I could go back to my room, but it's so nice to be just able to sit outside the bathing suit. Might dip my feet in the pool. It is a Friday, so I understand why there's people down here. And I guess the group next to me is all here for a wedding. I went to Ulta. Ooh, I'm gonna show you what I got. I saw this. Are you guys watching the nine month cruise on TikTok? Like, there's a Royal Caribbean around the world cruise. And so one of the ladies on it, they just went through LA and she got a bunch of stuff delivered. And so it's this Elf Sun Touchable, it's a spray, a sunscreen spray. So you can spray it on your face, spray it on my chest and on my shoulders. And so I'm gonna try that out because again, your girl burns thinking about the sun. So it's SPF 45. It's a sun protection and setting spray. So you can put this over your makeup. So I'm trying that out today. Got that at Ulta. I also grabbed some pizza. There was like a kind of like a Whole Foods over there. I was wanting to go to Nordstrom Rack, but it looks like it's closed. But yeah, so I'll sit out by the pool for a couple hours and I'll probably go upstairs and shower all this stuff off and get ready to go to work. But. I think I'll put my feet in the pool. Got my face on and now I'm gonna pack up. So behind me, I have the food I got. It won't fit in my food bag. And I went to this little store, which is where I got some pizza for lunch. I got some chips. I also bought some hand sanitizer to keep with me. And let me show you a funny thing that's in the fridge freezer thing. All right, so when I unloaded my stuff into it last night, <laughs> I think it needs a defrost cycle. What do you guys think? All right, so this is all I have left. I have some chicken salad, a Fair Life protein drink. I do have two yogurts and I have some peach iced tea. So I'm gonna put it all in the bag. On board the plane, headed back to Denver. Funny, not funny. We were sitting out in the lobby waiting for everyone to come down. And our first officer comes down. He's like, we're basically screwed. So it just stopped snowing in St. Louis, which is where we're headed to before we head to Denver where it is supposed to start snowing. But St. Louis, it's only one to four inches. They should be able to handle it. So fingers crossed that it's not the drama. Might slow us down a little, but hopefully not too bad because everyone, it's go home day and we don't want any drama. Let's go. We're in St. Louis. We had a mechanical issue that had to be looked at got the thumbs up from the mechanics. And then when we went to go, they put Denver under, under a ground stop for weather. But they lifted that ground stop a lot faster than we were told. So we're boarding up now, we're headed to Denver. Hopefully we don't have any issues getting into Denver. Here we go. I'm home from that trip. So update on the union stuff. Our company and the union have met. They're meeting right now. They've met like three or four days. So I'm really hopeful that maybe by the end of March, we might have another agreement to look at. Also, I just got back from a trip and I went to Memphis again and had 19 hours and I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? But I flew with someone who loves Memphis. And so we had a wonderful time. We went out and did two super cool things. So watch for that vlog. And next time I will see you guys in the sky.